save big this Christmas with food basket family deals now on at Shogwana Sanarima. Apples, 10 for $20. Prunes, $9.95 per pound. Tyson leg quarters, 11 pounds for $69.95. Butter cookies, 5 tins for $99. Marinex dishes, 2 for $99. Goat stew, $37.95 per pound. Birchia fries, 2,000 grams, $19.95. Take advantage of these Christmas specials at Food Basket, Shogwana Sanarima. I'm a cool kid, you're a cool kid, we are cool kids, are you a cool kid? Every day I want it, I need to drink lots of it, full of fruit, vitamin C, give me lots of it. My imagination is growing and so am I, I'm getting big So give me fruit of cool kids, it's so juicy, so I could touch the sky. Become a cool kid now by visiting www.fruitofcoolkids.com. Assalamu alaikum, good evening, and welcome to see results. You are live on IBN, and a special good evening to all our viewers on our live stream on Facebook. If you don't know about it, um, our live stream is right on our page, see results page, okay? So you can join us at any time. If you're on the move and you don't want to miss an episode, which I encourage you not to, you can just log on to Facebook and search see results and join us live. Um, so guys, it's Thursday. Uh, it's the end of the week, last day of school for many of us. I know such a relief, the pressure is on. But for you, Sandra, five students, the pressure is on, I must say. Right? Um, time is growing shorter and shorter every day. SE is just around the corner. I cannot, you know, emphasize that enough how time is critical here, how we need to manage our time as best as we can. So, yes, it's holidays. Yes, you want to have a little break. But while you are doing so, you are at home. Every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, don't forget, tune in with us. Um, you don't want to miss our SEA Live interactive um, C program. So, you know, we have mathematics, we have ELA, and we have creative writing, of course. Today, we have creative writing, and we have mathematics. So, I'm, I'm your host, Nyla, and I will be taking you through creative writing today. So, let's just get started. Last day, when we were doing creative writing, which was on Tuesday, uh, we started with the topic of transitional words. Now, we are talking about transitional words for narrative style writing. We haven't yet started report style writing. I mean, we do want to start um, very soon, hopefully. Um, but for narrative style writing, what we are focusing on right now, we started with transitional words for you to use in your story writing. So, so far, we started with transitional words. First, we needed to know what are transitional words. So this is just a quick recap. I know we did it already, but um, I'm doing this for the benefit of those who missed it. Also, like I said, the list of transitional words are quite, is very long, actually. We have a lot to go through. So we are not doing it all at once. We are taking it step by step. So probably each episode, we'll probably look at one or two types and look at how we can use those transitional words in our writing, which is going to help us improve our sentences and paragraphs very, very much. So we know that transitions are words or phrases used to connect one idea to the next. It is important to know that different transitions function differently, as we saw in some of the example paragraphs given. As a result, you must have a purpose for selecting a transition. That is important because you don't want to select the incorrect transition to throw off your sentence, and then your sentence will not make complete sense, right? So we're just going to look at the type of transi transitions that we need to go through. So we have all of these here, and we already started with transitions to show addition, and we started with transitions to compare and contrast. So we're talking about comparing and contrasting. We are looking at similarities, and we are looking at differences. Today, what we will be doing, we'll be looking at transitional words um, to indicate time and to indicate an example. But before we move on to those two for today, I just want to go through the list um, of transitional words to show addition and those to show compare or contrast. Good. 
Now, just bear this in mind, we may or may not come across one or two of them today, so I just wanted, wanted you to be refreshed and be reminded of those that you learnt already. And like I said, if you don't know these, these are new to you, um, you can just create your own list and start writing. Now, what is important and very, um, what you should know about creative writing, the way to get it perfect is to practice. You can't have creative writing without writing. Yes, it's one thing for you to sit at home and, you know, gather all this knowledge and take it in. All is well and fine. But how will you know if you can use it? You actually have to start writing. Write sample pieces, right? So we are going to do some of that today. So before we get into that, let's just go through this list. So if you want to show addition, you want to add to a story, you said something and you want to add on to that, how can you do it? Are you going to say then again? Are you going to say later again? Are you going to say next again? Are you going to say again and again and again? You need to know different words to supplement those. So we have like and, again, also, furthermore, in addition, moreover, next, to, not only, but also, in other words. This list here is actually quite short. Your list for transitional words to show addition is very long. Here is just a few that we use commonly. You may have one or two that, you know, that are your favorite. You use them all the time. Nothing is wrong with that, but I'm just reminding you, we do not want to repeat the same transitional word in your essay over and over. It's okay to use it once or twice, that's fine. But anytime you start using that transitional word um, three, four, five times, it becomes a problem. The reader gets tired of it, it becomes boring. The idea of it is to captivate your reader's attention, to hook them. You want them to read and to continue reading. Just be mindful of that. And then we have transitional words. Okay. Right, we have transitional words to compare and contrast. So like I said, when comparing, we are looking at similarities. When we are contrasting, we are looking at differences. They go hand in hand. So here are some that you can use if you want to compare and contrast anything in your writing. Um, so although, despite, however, in comparison, in contrast, in spite of, instead, likewise, nevertheless, on the other hand, similarly, notwithstanding. Again, this list is quite short and you know there are many to add to it. Just in case you missed what we did on Tuesday, you can go back to our live feed um, on Facebook, that is on our see results page, and you can rewatch that video. So if you missed that lesson on transitions, which is very important, introductory lesson, you need to go back and you need to look at it. And it's important because, like I said, each week we are going to be building on our transitional words. So by the end of at least three or four weeks, we are at least going to know 20 transitional words by heart, okay? And that's a lot. That's more than you need to know uh, to write an essay, right? But nothing is wrong with knowing an extra few. So to get into what we want to do today, we want to actually, right, so again, like I said, we are doing transitions. So we are doing transitional words, and we want to talk about transitional words to indicate time and to indicate an example. So those of you at home or wherever you are and you're
but there are lots of creative ways and words we can choose to, you know, take us away from once upon a time. To start one morning, initially one day. Now, what about the middle of your story? You can use then, next, later, second, also, soon. So you're looking at then and you're looking at next and later. These are three popular ones I see all the time. You know, students come up with their creative writing and then you see then, 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 or later, later, later. It's actually quite boring. You know, you do not want to throw off your reader. So I encourage you students, please use the extensive list here. Use it, get familiar with it, okay? Substitute the word then for something else. We also have after that, suddenly, before long, later that day. Meanwhile, unfortunately. Now, you're at the end of your story. You need transitional words also at the end of your story. To wrap it up, you can say finally, last, at last, in the end, eventually, to sum it up, last but not the least, and as a result. These are some popular ones as well that we use in our story writing all the time, right guys? Just like last day, now I'm going to show you how you can use these transitional words or even identify these transitional words in a paragraph. So here I have for you a sample paragraph. You're going to read it together with me and you are going to identify, identify your transitional words. So let's read. Suddenly, our parents arrived home. Jeffrey and I were in serious hot water. Although I had nothing to do with spilling the soup, my parents would have scolded me for not being responsible enough for my eight-year-old brother. Immediately, I presented myself to them. Coming, mommy, I shouted nervously. So I'm just going to give you a minute. I want you to highlight on your piece of paper or even write down what you think are the transitional words here. And what transition are you seeing? What transition do they create when using those words? That's more important. You need to see what these words are doing and how they increase, increase the interest when you are reading. And of course, making that flow very smooth. So, starting off the paragraph here. Obviously, this paragraph is just stand, is probably, you could take it as a standalone or maybe something was happening in the previous paragraph, right? That's more than likely the case here. When you say suddenly, that means something was happening before. And now suddenly our parents arrived home. So suddenly, our first transitional word there, it shows time. All of a sudden, right? Shows time. You were not expecting that. Although I had nothing to do with the spilling, the soup was my, the, spilling the soup, my parents, would have scolded me for not being responsible enough for my eight-year-old brother. Any other transitional words that you see in there? If you said although, you are also correct. Now, although is not a transitional word of time, but we did come across although. I wonder in which one? In addition or compare and contrast? I hope you can tell me and I hope you can recognize it. I'm not going to tell you all, okay? Just see if you're paying attention. Let's move on. Immediately, I presented myself to them. Coming, mommy, I shouted nervously. Your other transitional word here. Immediately, it means now. Right? Notice that change there in your tone. So please be mindful of all these things transition. Transitional words are used for. And as I was saying last day, there are transitional words and then there are transitional phrases. Right, guys? We use them. You can use either, whichever is suitable to that piece you are writing. So... Notice your two pieces or, or two transitional words here of time. And then you have although, which is a mystery. I'm not telling you all. I know that you know. And if you don't know, I encourage you to go back to our last video and get that answer. Now, we also often talk about examples and give examples, right? Um, so when you are writing about something and you want to give an example, how do you say it? Which words do you use? Which transitional words do you use more importantly? If you don't know any or any doesn't come to your mind, here are a few that you can probably follow, use as a guide to help you get started. 
um, very familiar to you, I'm sure. Um, so you have transition words that provide an example. You have for example, very, very obvious there. For instance, in particular, particularly, specifically, to demonstrate, to illustrate. All of these are transitional words that you can use if you want to talk about an example. If you can't remember any of that, I'm sure you can remember the first one. For example, it comes from the word example. Another way to say example, for instance. Right, guys? So you just have to open up your mind and think a little bit. Relax. Don't get too nervous. Don't get frustrated. Take your time and you will figure it out. All of this you have been doing um, for a long time, standard four, standard five, and even before. But specifically, now, right? Now is SEA time and your teachers are reviewing some of this, still doing some content, right? So you have a lot of work to do. Now, we want to look at a sample paragraph here that I have for you, uh, which is going to show us how we can use transitional words to show an example, right? And what you can do, you can even write your own paragraph, and in that paragraph, you can use transitional words to show time, addition, because we have done that so far, um, time, addition, compare, contrast, or even example. So when you have written that paragraph, you can probably take it to mommy or daddy and have them look it over for you, even provide them with a list, and let them see that you have used these transitional words in a paragraph. And even to test yourself, even if you don't want to show anyone, just to test yourself, that's a way you can even assess yourself. You're looking at your use of transitional words. Write a freestyle paragraph on anything you want to write about. After you have written that paragraph, look at it closely, examine it, and see if you, if you completed any of those things. And if you did, you're on the right track, my friend. And if you did not, you still have some work to do, right? SCA is not tomorrow, but we still have some work to do, right? But I encourage you, please get familiar with it. Now let's look at this paragraph here. Firstly, in addressing air pollution, we should aim to reduce our carbon emissions. For example, instead of commuting by car, we can try to do it by foot or by bike. We can also consider carpooling, for instance. Look at that closely. What transitions do you see? And transitions to show what? Look at that first word there, firstly. What does firstly tell you? Firstly, it's a sequence of time. First, you must do something. So in this case, in addressing, the, in, in, in addressing air pollution, we should do so and so. Let's move on. For example, instead of commuting by car, we can try to do it by foot or by bike. Any transitional words there? Which are we looking for again? For example, which shows an example of how you can use a transitional word for examples there. We can try to do it by foot or by bike. We can also consider carpooling, for instance. In case you missed this here, also here shows in addition. It shows addition to what we can do before, how we can do something else, but concerning the same topic is addition of information. And what can we do? Consider carpooling, for instance. Another way you can say, for example, and that's your example there, by carpooling. Right, guys? I hope you are getting that. Great. Now, for today's topic, what we are going to do, we are going to start the writing process. So just now, we just went through... Um, two new types of transitional words. So we had, for example, um, or transitional words to show example, and then we had transitional words to show uh, time. And before that, we had transitional words to show addition, and then we had trans transitional words to show compare and contrast. So all those that you just learned, apply them, start using them, test yourself, write a freestyle paragraph, like I said, and practice it. We're just going to go for a short break, when we come back, I need you to get your pencil, get your notepad in front of you. We are going to do a little bit of writing and analyzing. Okay, guys? So we'll be right back after these messages.
Assalamu alaikum. Good evening and welcome back, guys. You are live with us right here on IBN with C Results. And you are also live for those of you on Facebook with us uh, via our C Results page. Before the break, we were talking about transitional words. We have started going through different types of transitional words, looking at examples, as well as looking at how you can use those examples in writing, which is very important. It's one thing to know transitional words. It's another for you to actually use them in writing and use them correctly. Because we said that using a transitional word or when selecting a transitional word, it must be purposeful. You must know why you are choosing that transitional words. If you are now joining us, welcome, guys. And um, just remember, replays are every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And of course, once the video has ended on our C results page via Facebook, just go back to that page and you can view that video for any part or any episode that you miss. So now what we want to do, we want to talk a, a little bit about the writing process. So parents, what is the writing process? How familiar are you with the writing process? Or do you just know that your child has to write an essay? But what do they learn before they start to actually write essays? What do they need to know? What are the stages that they go through to help them develop that perfect essay? And this is what this is all about. We want to show you the stages, to, the various stages actually, that you have to take or that your child has to take in order to reach that perfect last stage. So the writing process involves five different things. Your pre-writing stage. Pre-writing is like it says, is before you actually begin writing. You have, this is where you are given a topic and you actually have to start thinking about what you want to write. In other words, planning. Even when I was um, you know, learning to write essays, this is what I did. I would just probably draw a cloud in the middle and draw a couple lines and sketch out my plan before I actually started planning. It's no different here, except now we have a variety of techniques or strategies you can use for pre-writing. So I will show you some in a few moments, but I will also go through some with you. So you can either draw a cloud, Idea cloud we call it, um, or brainstorming cloud, draw a cluster, a semantic map. You can even list your ideas. You can use the five W's and H. That's another strategy to help you plan out what you want to write in your essay. Just to remember, your plan is for your entire essay. It's not just for one paragraph. And I know a lot of students write their essay and then write their plan. Um, to be honest, that is not the correct way. What you should do ideally, draw out your plan before. That is going to help you because a lot of times you reach your second paragraph and you are stuck. You do not know where to go. If you spend that extra five minutes before planning, you're going to have a clear idea what you want to write about. Now, ideas can change. Nothing is wrong with that. But you just need to at least have a sketch of what you are thinking about writing. And if as you go, ideas change, then embrace that change, right guys? Drafting. Drafting there is the first piece of writing. So it's not the final piece where you have all corrections and everything is perfect. No, that's not it. There you are just going to write down your first um, impression or first idea of what that topic is all about. Your first time writing this essay. Right, so it's not going to be perfect. You're going to have grammatical errors, spelling errors, punctuation, and so on. That's okay. Remember, it's your first writing. So just write out your essay as you want it to be. And then in your next step, that is where you'll have to rewrite. So that was your drafting. Revision now is looking at your drafting stage and then correcting those errors. So you're going to look at what you have written, look at what you have written, and look at it closely. Pinpoint all those little errors, see what does make sense, what makes sense, and then you can write it over. That becomes your second draft. Editing. After your second draft, of, after your revision and your second draft, you edit. You go back again, and then you look at it closely. So if your teacher gives you an essay to write over the weekend, this is what you can do. Use the writing process. Do not just rush it on because you want to go to the mall with mommy. Take your time, use the writing process, and I assure you that is going to help you um, to improve your writing, very much so. So after you have edited your revised piece, 
then you go on to publication. What is publication? And that is just handing up your final draft of your essay. That is your final piece. You have nothing more to fix. You think that is as perfect as it can get. You're not seeing any mistakes and you know you want to hand up that piece. That is simply what it is. So follow the writing process. I know it's lengthy, it's tedious, but it's going to help you. It really, really helps you. So just to show you guys, all of what we have seen here, uh, I'm not just telling you about it. We are actually going to do it step by step together. So today we are going to be looking at the pre-writing stage and then we are going to be looking at the drafting stage. Just keep in mind that your pre-writing is your brainstorm, just your ideas, your plan of what you have to write, and your draft is your first writing. It's not going to be perfect. So the examples that I'm presenting to, presenting to you today, you will see what I mean by not perfect. So first we must know that in pre-writing we must have to pick a topic and we have to start brainstorming ideas. Just some general tips for you to follow when you are pre-writing or planning out what you are going to write. First, you must look at that topic very closely. All right? or you can underline keywords there that, uh, that is going to help you so that you will not miss anything in that topic. Last day, when Sirijas went through analyzing pieces, student submission, we pointed out that it's very easy for you to move away from the topic. The idea is to stick on the topic. If you don't stick on the topic, you are not going to get complete marks. As a matter of fact, you might get very low marks. And that is the furthest from what we want. The aim is to achieve full marks in your narrative or report style writing. That is why it's important when you get that topic, you read that topic. Read it once, read it twice, read it even thrice. Nothing is wrong with that. Highlight the key words and then start planning. Tips. Think about what you want to see. What do I want to say about this topic? What am I going to say? What should I say? All of these are questions that are running through your mind. As soon as an idea pops in your head, jot it down. You can put it in your plan after, you can write it in your essay after, jot it down. Sometimes you have a really great idea and then in a split second that idea just vanishes. So I encourage you to just jot that down. Find the main idea. What is the main idea of that topic? What are they asking you to do? Like I was saying, remember to stick on topic. That's another way of finding the main idea. Use a list of web to organize your ideas. So that's like the different strategies I was pointing out to you where you can either list or use a web or a graphic organizer or any of those strategies just to plan out your idea. Here I have behind me um, an example of a plan. The strategy that I chose to show you today, or one of, I should say, is using the five W's and H. You will notice one of the W's is missing there. That was intentional. Everything you are seeing on the screen is intentional. Errors, no errors, whether it's uh, making complete sense to you or not, that is intentional. Just be mindful of that. So here I have... Right, I completely forgot this, guys. Please forgive me. Um, your topic here, what you were given to do, you had to write a story in which you came face to face with a ferocious dog. Be sure to use rich details that will appeal to your reader. You may include det details about how you got into this predicament, what you did to escape, how you felt during the ordeal, how the situation turned out in the end. A lot of you may have written on this topic already. But that's the thing about creative writing. You can write this topic three times and you will have three different ideas. That's why it's called creative writing. Be creative, use your imagination. Look at the topic here. Let's look at what the main idea is in our topic. You have to write a story in which you came face to face. Keywords. You came face to face with a ferocious dog. When you see the words a ferocious dog, what kind of dog are you talking about? What kind of dog immediately comes to your mind? Um, what does ferocious mean? Am I talking about a nice, tame um, house dog? Am I talking about a stray dog? Or even a neighbor's dog who is just, as we say in Trinidad, bad, right? So what kind of dog is that? Your understanding of vocabulary here is very important. You must be able to internalize 
and understand the meaning of these words. If you do not understand the meanings, that can throw you off. That happens to students sometimes. You see a word there, but you do not know what it means, and you misinterpret that topic, all because you did not understand what the word means. One way um, you can probably rectify that, start revising some vocabulary. When you are reading, which I encourage you to do, you are reading a novel or whatever you are reading, and you come across a new word, underline it, and use your dictionary, find the meaning. That is how you are going to expand your vocabulary. And when you come across this word, you know what that word means, right? You are not going to be confused by that. Let's move on. Be sure to use rich details that will appeal to the reader. Key there, use rich details. You do not want your reader to drop asleep and then wake up and give you 10 out of 20, right? You may include details about how you got into this predicament. What does predicament mean? In this context, if you don't know the meaning of ferocious, and you see in this here, what do you think the word predicament means? Simply, problem. How did you get into this problem? What did you, what you did to escape? How did you escape that ferocious dog? How you fell during the ordeal? You must, must, must give us vivid descriptions. I must be able, when I'm reading your writing, I must be able to picture what you are saying about that dog. You're saying that dog is rushing at you, you're rushing down, you're, that dog is rushing at you, you're busy running down the street, you're fearing for your life, you're cold sweating, your heart is palpitating. I must see that picture clearly. I must see it and I must know that you are doing it, you are feeling it. And you can express that through language. Your language use, choice of words. And how the situation turned out in the end. And here is simply asking you for your resolution. How was the problem solved? Right, guys? So just remember in your topic, underline your keywords. Understand what the words mean. If you don't know the meaning of ferocious, you didn't know the meaning of predicament, think about it in the context that they are asking you. They said write a story in which you came face to face with a ferocious dog. Think about it. What, what are they really asking you to do? Try to think, you know, is this person asking me to write about a nice encounter with a, a quiet dog? Really, is that going to be exciting? Possibly, right guys? But in this case, it's about a ferocious dog. So now what I want to show you here is an example of pre-writing. In other words, brainstorming, planning out your essay. Here, like I said, we are using the five W's and H technique, leaving out one W, which is intentional. This is an example of what a child has written. We are going to examine this plan and we're going to see what he or she wrote and how effective is this plan. How much sense does it make? Is there anything missing? What can be added? And so on. So let's see. Great. Chased by a ferocious dog. So here they outlined first, they had the title or a summary of the topic, which is great because ju it's just the plan is just for you. It's just for you to know what I'm going to write about. Child chose to be fancy, drew a cloud. Nothing is wrong with that. Started planning. Who? Who meaning characters in your story? So he gave, I'm assuming Rufus here as the dog. Sounds like a dog's name. Uh, me, referring to himself. Rufus's owner. So we're going to probably find out about Rufus's owner. We're going to probably learn a little bit more about Rufus. Who was Rufus? Where? Where is this taking place? In other words, your setting. So notice, guys, so far, instead of who, you could have probably said characters. You could have said characters. Where? You could say setting. Right? But nothing is wrong with who and where. I'm just showing you an alternative. Let's move on. Where did this happen? It's setting in my neighborhood. So in my neighborhood is fine. But when you say in my neighborhood, where in your neighborhood? Can you describe that neighborhood for me? I hope you can in your creative writing. How? How what? Person just said how. How what? How are you feeling? How is it happening? I don't understand, right? So something is probably missing here. Let's move on. When? When is the story taking place? When is the attack place taking place? When did you come face to face with this ferocious dog? He said, 
while I was walking. Walking where? We are hoping to find out. Why? Because the owner left the gate open. Um, that's why for what? What is that why asking there? Why was the dog probably on the road? Um, why were you attacked? Right? So from this plan here, I am I'm trying to find out from you guys, uh, is this plan very clear? Does it have sufficient details? Can you get a clear picture of what this writer is going to write in his essay? If you cannot, I agree with you. It's very simple. The ideas here are presented on this cloud, but not sufficient details are given on the cloud. I am not saying that in your cloud you need to write sentences and so on. Huh? And what I'm saying is probably in your setting, um, is it one setting? Is the entire story going to take place in your neighborhood? You probably could have included something else there. Where in your neighborhood? Probably in an alley, a back road, on the street, something like that. Okay, give us a clearer vision. Rufus. Who is Rufus? We don't know. I'm assuming, right? We still yet to find out who is Rufus. Why? Because the owner left the gate open. But why what? When? While I was walking. Where were you walking? I do not know. How? How here is a mystery to us. We don't know how. How he's feeling, um, how it's happening, all of those things we are yet to be answered. So this cloud here, it's not the perfect example, but I showed you this because I wanted you to understand how this incomplete um, cloud with ideas, so the ideas are not completed, how it sets us back a little bit. So if I'm the reader and I'm looking at this here, I do not fully understand what this child is going to get at in the story. He has a clear idea, but I do not have a clear idea. I need to be able to understand the plot as it unfolds. But let's now look at the first draft. So that's the next step. We did pre-writing there. So your pre-writing was your brainstorm, your planning out. Now your next step there is your first draft, your first writing of the topic. Remember, in your first writing, it's not going to be perfect. So you're drafting there. They're telling you to start writing. Get your ideas on paper. Right, guys? Select the ideas that relate more to the topic you have chosen. For that there, for example, for example, okay, this board just keeps skipping a bit, right? For example, I actually want to show you this. So if in my neighborhood here, I had some other information about the neighbors um, stood by and watch and while they were eating popcorn while I was being chased by a dog and so on. There, select the ideas that relate more to the topic you have chosen. Is the neighbors eating popcorn more to your topic? Does that relate to your topic? Is that going to help you? Is that going to take away from what you are writing? You need to know this. And we learned about supporting details and then irrelevant details. So you need to write details which are relevant to your story or supporting your story. Try to stay away from irrelevant details. Also, guys, if you missed that topic on irrelevant details, um, you can always go back and review that topic. It was quite informational and it teaches you how to stay away from irrelevant details or details that are not wanted when you are writing. Good. Here I have for you the first draft of that child. So we could probably just zoom in here a bit. I want you to look closely at this home. While we are reading or after we have read this piece, I want you to start taking notes of things that are positive or even negative from this piece, right? Things that you, you will write for yourself and things that you would not write or what should be omitted or left out. Let's read. Ah, ah, I screamed as I trudged down the street. It was a Wednesday evening. The sun started to fade away. The color of the sky changed from its multicolor to a dark orange. I was walking along Maracas Drive on my way to Nikki's Minimat. All of a sudden, Rufus, the neighbor's dog, ran out. I stood momentarily paralyzed. I almost fainted in fear as Rufus came closer and closer to me. I thought it was the last moment of my life. Was I about to be mauled to death? Rufus dashed after me. I hurriedly dashed down the street, running for my life. 
Grr, grr. The dog barked as I got weary from running. The owner heard the situation and ran outside of her house and caught the dog and then apologized to me. Now, I'm going to give you a minute. Read it over. What we are looking for here are simply errors. But what are the errors that you are identifying? In this first draft, as you can see, we clearly have three paragraphs. It's clear, it's very, it's indented, so we know we have three paragraphs, right? That's also important. Don't forget to indent when you are writing, whether it's um, narrative or report. So that's a plus for this child here. But now we are going to look at it closely, and we are seeing that in these three paragraphs, it's actually pretty short. But this is the entire essay. Is this enough to present to your SEA marker? Is this the type of essay you really want to hand up? Is this what you are going to be proud of? More importantly, is this your best work? Right, guys? So look at it closely and think for yourself. Write down on your paper what is wrong about it and what is correct about it or what should be corrected in this piece here. What we are going to do, we are going to look at it a little more closely and we are going to pinpoint all the errors. Here I have the same piece, same submission. Oh, let me just point out the submission is not from Edmodo, guys. So please um, don't go back looking for an assignment where you have to write an essay based on that topic. This is not from Edmodo, okay? Right. <clears throat> so in this draft here, I highlighted a few things, but try not to only focus on those things, right? I'm going to show you why I highlighted those sentences or lines shortly. So let's go. We are going to look at it critically. We are looking at a few things. So let's go back to the screen there. So let's look first of all. We are learning about transitional words. We have we learned a little bit about that today, and we learned a little bit about that on Tuesday. Let's look at this entire essay. Are you seeing any transitional words here? Look at it. And we sometimes we use transitional words at the beginning. Not all, not all the time, or we might use them in the middle, as we just saw in our example, right? But in this piece here, there is no evidence of transitional words. Now, this sentence, however, or phrase, I stood momentarily paralyzed. It shows a transition. I agree, some of you might say it shows a transition, right? Because the tone of the, the, your essay, sorry, changes now. But is it a transitional word? Is it a transitional phrase, right? Or is it a matter of just simply stating something? Let's move on. So we're not seeing any transitional words there. So that's already a negative sign. Let's see. What else is missing here? Or if you wanted to insert transitional words, what can you say here? Let's look at this, this phrase here. I stood momentarily paralyzed. If I wanted to add a transitional word there, what can I say? I could have probably said, at that moment, comma, I stood momentarily paralyzed, or even, if you didn't want to say that, you could choose what you wanted to and where you wanted to insert your transition. That is up to you. Remember, your transitional words is just to show a smooth flow. So if you wanted to use a transitional word somewhere in the middle here, that is fine. But remember, this is just our first draft. So what we need to do in our first draft is to identify these errors before, now we are revising, right? Identify these errors before we move on to the next step. Let's go back to this and look again. What about sequencing? Do you understand the plot of the story? Is it arranged in such a way, the ideas, is it arranged in such a way that is sequential and logical to you? I think it is. I understand what the uh, writer is trying to say, and it is, in fact, in order. I, uh, he was walking down the road, and then a dog attacked him. How did he feel? And then the dog got caught. Maybe some details are missing there, but the dog, but um, the ideas are put across there in a sequential manner. So that's fine, that's well. What about content? When you speak about content, we're looking at setting, we're looking at setting plot characters and relevant details. So think about those things to me. Think about your setting, your plot, 
your characters and your and your details of course and we are going to take a short break shortly but when we come back we are going to continue analyzing the speech so before before i go i just want to remind you to actually look for that when we come back i'm going to pinpoint to you all the errors okay guys we'll be back after these messages
Assalamu alaikum, good evening and welcome back guys to see results you are live on IBN and of course those of you who are live on our Facebook page via see results. So before the break we were looking at this um, essay right behind me here. We are closely looking at it, analyzing. We are looking for errors, you know, we are looking to see the positives and the negative of this piece. Remember the idea is not only for negatives but what I, the idea behind it is to show you mistakes that are common in writing. So, so far, we looked, at, uh, we looked at use of transitional words and then we looked at um, the sequence of the essay. Now we are looking at the content of the writing. So when I say content, content covers your setting, your plot, your characters, etc. So let's see now. Let's first look at our characters. Who are our characters in the story? We have himself, right? I did not mean to do that. Right, so we have... The writer, we have Rufus, who we understand to be the neighbor's dog. And then we have your neighbor. We have right, the owner here, which I assume is the neighbor. So those are the three characters in your story. But from what we understand about character writing, we must know that in writing about our characters, we must describe our character. The idea or the topic of this um, essay was to write an, about an encounter with a ferocious dog. I did not see any description about that dog being ferocious. How do I know it's not a, it's a little poodle, you know, or a little uh, puppy that's chasing after you, but you are really scared of dogs? You must give me a clear picture describing, probably you can name dogs if you, uh, if you like dogs, you probably know a lot of names of dogs. Give us the name of the dog, give us um, how the dog looks, is it mean, how angry he looks, um, his face, is it like a beast? What size? The size of his body. You know, you can describe all of those things to show that the dog is ferocious. From what we have here, we don't have any description about that dog. Description is very important and it's key, guys. What about setting? Where is the story taking place? Um, it's taking place um, down the street. Down the street where? I need some more information about that. Can you tell me? Um, is it your neighborhood? Is it your friend's neighborhood? Is it an alley? Is it a back street? Is there people? Are there people on the street? Are you, are you alone? You know, all of those things you could probably describe. Give us a little more about your setting. Your setting here was poorly described. You can probably give us a two cents more on that. And your plot. Your plot is fine. We can see the ideas as they are unfolding. Um, probably the essay could have been a little longer. Doing so, you, all you have to do is just add a little more description. And talking about description, let's look at relevant details. All the details that the writer presented here, I would think they are relevant. I didn't see anything here that I would omit. It's fine, just add a little more to it. And, and that's about it for that, okay? It's very simple. We have been learning about ways to make sentences more interesting or to join sentences. Use those ideas to help you. Don't just stick to your old habits of writing as you usually do. Use all of that knowledge and apply it. Okay, guys, we are not finished with this piece, but we are very close to the end of the segment. So what I will do, I will have to continue on Tuesday when we have creative writing again. And we're going to continue analyzing this piece. Now, if you found this interesting, you know, don't miss next week's episode. Because you want to see now how this writing is going to be improved upon. After we have analyzed it so critically, now we have to improve that writing. That's the point after your first draft. And take this as an incentive to do whatever essay you have given or even give yourself one to do and improve upon your writing. Use the little tidbits to help you in whatever way possible. Before I go, I just want to remind you guys, if you are a new viewer, and you need to join our Edmodo class, please, this is your code here to follow. Notice there was a change in our code. That change is only for new um, persons who are joining this account. If you have already joined, no problem, no worries. You don't need to change your code. This is just a new code here to follow. Uh, these instructions for students and parents are up on our C results page on Facebook. Just look at that picture, click on it, and these the steps are really followed to get, are really easy, sorry to get started. Um, don't go anywhere, guys. Stay right there. Uh, we have Sergius coming up with mathematics. And I know some of you might be a little, dis would have been a little disappointed that you didn't get a call 
and give your answer in this segment. But creative writing is so much talking and, you know, practice as well. Um, but don't be disappointed, you know, Sir Jazz is coming and you will be calling and calling and calling. So thank you guys for joining me. I have been your creative writing teacher. Stay tuned for Sir Jazz at 6 p.m. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. Good evening, assalamu alaikum, and welcome back to Sea Results on IBN TV and streaming on the Sea Results Facebook page as well as the IBN TV Facebook page. Um, so we are back with mathematics, our second session of mathematics for the week. Earlier on in the week, we would have started the statistics um, element of the SEA paper, and parents be reminded that there are four main branches of mathematics that are tested for SEA. All right, we have the number, the measurement, the geometry, and the statistics. We have done a little bit in each so far. Um, we are currently in statistics. And once we are done with that, we're going to go back to number. And we're going to keep it in those topics until we knock out as many as we can before the SEA exam in April of 2020. So we were looking at averages last time. All right, and we had gotten as far as the mean. So I hope for those of you who may have missed the program, when we did it live, um, that you would have had an opportunity to watch it back on our Facebook page, on the C Results Facebook page, under the Videos tab. You're going to find all of our videos that were posted, and you can watch them, you can pause them. If there's a question posted, you can hit the pause button, 
attempt to do it before you get the answer from us and compare your answer with them. Um, and I would very much encourage you to do so because as you may know by now, every week we attempt to post some quizzes and assignments based on the content that was covered for that week. And then we gave you basically an entire week to do it and we review it um, on the Monday program. So there's just a couple more days. We actually extended this week's one until Sunday at 11.59 p.m. There is a maths assignment on some geometry that we did last week. There is also a grammar assignment for the English language arts. And there's a creative writing assignment where you get to write sentences, right? Using your knowledge of extending sentences, the adverbs, the adjectives, and also um, the five W's and H and so on. And of course, you're going to have an opportunity to be featured on our program. Those of you who, are, who would have done excellently, you know, we give you all a little shout out. Um, those of you who write, uh, we take some of your pieces. If you would like us to use your name, we do so as well. Um, so there's a lot of fun, a lot of excitement, a lot of buzz around it, and we want to keep it growing. The membership is continually growing on our Edmodo page. Um, Ms. Shah would have just given you the code to sign up for the new registrants. It's absolutely free. Just like the program, all you have to do is tune in, look, learn, um, call in, do the assignments online, and by the grace of God, by the time SCA exam has come around, you will be prepared. All right. So, we said the last time that statistics, what is it? All right. We, we learned that statistics is a study of data, how to collect it, how to analyze, summarize, and to present it. And one of the um, quite regular type of questions in your section one uh, area of statistics on the paper, those questions are with one marks, remember. Uh, I'll tell you some more about the paper for those of you who may be, who may be joining us just for the first time today. Um, right, there, there are one mark, there's one mark allocated for these questions, but still, they can be a bit challenging, all right? So when we deal with statistics, we deal with stats, we deal with numbers, and the numbers are usually representative of some sort of um, data, okay? So we're gonna show you how it is we use our knowledge of statistics to answer these questions. And uh, so we dealt with the mean, and we have just gotten to do one question so far on the topic of mode, all right? So we said that the arithmetic mean is one type of average where we basically sum all of the data that we have and we divide by the number of um, figures or the number of numbers that we have, right? And I gave you all a handy little formula to remember, which was the sum divided by the count. And we were able to manipulate this formula to find out various things. Not just to find the average, but to find the sum in some cases. And I urge you again to go back and look at that video. Now, today, we are dealing with the mode. And the mode is actually a bit easier to get um, in most cases. The mode is actually just the thing or the value, the item in the data set that is most common, the one that occurs most frequently. And we just need to be able to look at it and to identify it. And there's a handy way that you can use, um, a handy method that you can use to identify the mode without making too many mistakes. Because what happens frequently is that they will give you a bunch of numbers and all of them kind of resemble each other or they are very close to each other. And to distinguish the different ones, there's a nice little tool that we can use, which is our frequency table and our tally chart, all right? So the mode is the thing that is occurring most frequently in our numbers in our data set. All right, the most popular. And immediately today, we are going to be opening the lines because we do have a couple mode questions to answer. Um, this one would have been answered on only this one on the last program. But if anybody wants to beat me to the punch and call in with an answer, you know, maybe you, you weren't here last time, you, would, you weren't with us, you didn't have a chance to watch the um, session since then. Um, we are looking at a student or, or somebody actually by the name of Hazra, and she is counting cars that is passing her school, right? So yes, more than likely it's a student. And she was taking note of the colors of the cars as they passed. And she drew up a little table here um, with the colors red, blue, 
green, white, and black, and we wanted to find out what color is the mode, right? Or which, which color was the mode in these vehicles. So again, if you'd like to call in and give us your answer, you can do so now. So on the left-hand side of our table, we have the color, right? And then on the right-hand side, we have our frequency. So what does this mean? This means that while counting the red cars, she saw a total of seven, right? So that is why there's a frequency of seven. Um, she would have seen how many blue cars? Ten blue cars. She would have also seen five green cars and 14 white cars. And finally, she saw 10 black cars. So which color from that table is the mode? Again, we said the mode is the one that occurs most frequently. So therefore, the answer for this question would have been white. Why white? Because we have the highest number there for frequency. Of course, she also saw a significant number of black cars and blue cars. She saw green cars the least. You know, she said red was somewhere in between. But the mode, there's only one mode here, and it is white. Of course, if she had seen another of the colors equally with white, which would have been 14 as well in number, then we would have had two modes, which would have been white and whichever other um, color she had seen the same amount, all right? But in this particular question, we only have one mode, and the color of the vehicle, it is white. So white is the mode for this question, and I hope that you all had gotten that one. All right, and we'll be moving on to another question. So we have another question here up on the board. So you know, somebody is rolling um, dice, and they roll the dice 10 times during a game. And these are the numbers that were obtained, all right? So every time they threw the dice, they jotted down on a piece of paper the number that they would have landed on that dice. So again, for the viewers at home, I would like you all, if you have, um, any, any ideas as to what the mode of this data set might be, you can feel free to call and tell us what the mode is in this data set. Those numbers, are, again, are at the bottom of your screen, and I do have a caller on the line. Good evening, and welcome to See Results on IBN TV. Good evening, caller. <clears throat> caller, good evening, and welcome to IBN TV. Hello? Hello? Good evening, caller. Welcome, welcome to see results on IBN TV. Do you have an answer for us? Yes. Hi. Hi, and who am I speaking with today? Nick, Nicholas. Hey, welcome, Nicholas. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. And what do you think is the mood of this data set, Nicholas? Um, the answer is six, because six occurs most frequent. Most frequent. All right, most frequently. Very well done. The number six. How many times did he roll a six, Nicholas? Okay, so Nicholas is gone, but he did have the correct answer, and we thank him very much for that. All right, so in case you're, you're looking at this very long-looking number here on the question paper, and it's making you raise your eyebrow, each individual number here would have been the number on the dice every time the player would have rolled the dice. So they rolled the first time, they got a three, they got a two on the second time, a six, a five, and so on, all right? So you can look at it, but sometimes, you know, your, your eyes can be fooled when looking at um, so many numbers at once, all right? So what we could easily have done, right, to make sure you do it accurately, okay, so we have the number here on the dice, and we have the frequency here, all right? So let's, let's look at our data and look at the lowest number that there was, was a one. There was also a two. There was a three. At least one I mean when I say, when I say this, all right? There was a four. There was a five. And there was a six. So the, the, the rolled 
each number at least once, okay? And let's look now at the ones. How many ones do we have? Let's just erase this. We have A1. Do we have any other ones? No, we don't have any other ones. So the frequency of that is 1, okay? So the frequency of the number 1 in this problem is 1. Let's move on. What about the twos? How many twos do we have? We only have one two, all right? So the frequency of two will also be one. Let's move on to the threes now. How many threes do we have? We have A3 here and we have another. So all together, we have two threes. So the frequency of three will be two because it occurs twice. All right, what about the fours? As you can see, we have only one four. Again, the frequency there is a four, um, is a one, sorry. And fives, how many fives do we have? We have one five here and we have another five there. The frequency of the five is two. And what about sixes? How many sixes do we have? We have one, two, three sixes. So the frequency of the sixes is three, all right? So therefore, the answer or the mode would have been three because we have three number sixes, which is the highest frequency. Uh, point to note is that if you were to add up these frequencies, you know, one, add one, and we add, add it to the two and so on, we are going to end up with the number of throws that we had. So that is a handy tool um, if we could just pan down on the screen a little bit there, that is a handy tool to know if we did do our tallying correctly in our frequency, all right? So we know that the, he rolled the dice 10 times. We have 10 numbers here. When we add up those frequencies, we should get back a 10. If we don't get back a 10, it means that we have forgotten to count one or more of the numbers, or we may even have counted one more than we should have, right? So this is a handy method to make sure you didn't make a mistake. So we have two here, add two, which would give us four, add one, which would give us five, and we have another two and three here to give us another five. And when we add all of that together, we would have gotten a 10, all right? So therefore, we know that we did our frequency count correctly, and the mode for this question is a three, all right? So when you do a question with us, we approach it from every single angle to make sure that you understand why the answer is what it is, all right? The mode has to do with the frequency, how often something occurs, the one that occurs the most is the mode, and we just learned something there about frequency and about double checking our values when we are looking for the mode, all right? So the mode there was three. And we'll now move on to another question, and we're going to open up the lines once more. So we're going to have a closer look at this question. In the meantime, the scores of students in a mathematics test are shown below. All right, we have, how many scores do we have? We have 10 scores, right? All 10 scores are listed there on the screen. Um, so these students, some of them did quite well, some of them did below, um, some of them did just bare passing. And there's another guy by the name of Alan who scored five marks less than the modal score. So we want to calculate Alan's score. So there are two things that we need to do in order to solve this question, right? Before we can figure out how much Alan scored, because his score is not up there on the board, we need to figure out what the modal score is. That's another way of asking what the mode is. So if we know the mode of this, of these test scores, then we can find out how much Alan got. All right, so again, the lines are open, and I do have a caller on the line. Good evening, and welcome to see results on IBN TV. Hello. Hi, good evening, caller. Who am I speaking with? My name is Adriana Collins from Australia. Okay, and thanks for calling. Um, do you know what is the modal score here in this data set, in, this, in these test scores? The mode is? The, the mode is? The mode is 61. 61? 
Uh, is it possible for you to repeat that a little lo more loudly? I call her, you still there with us? Okay, so we're going to give someone else a chance. I am. I get the impression that he found the mean there. But remember that we are looking for the mode. And the mode is the most occurring number in our data. Or in, in this case, the test scores. So we have five test scores up there. Which one is the mode? And I do have another caller on the line. Good evening. Welcome to See Results on IBN TV. Hi, good day. I am Nicholas. The, the answer for number 9 is, is 73 because the mode is 78. So uh -huh. when you subtract 5 from that, you get 73. Oh my gosh. Excellent work, Nicholas. Thank you so much again for your input. Um, that is quite correct. The answer is 73. So this young man is on fire this, this evening. How do we know what the mode is? Class and um, parents viewing along with us we have a total of of 10 test scores all right and we want to know which is the mode and again to just make sure that you don't get mixed up it is advisable to draw your little frequency table all right we're going to do it again for the benefit of everyone all right even the caller who just called in and that's okay. He, may have, he or she may have gotten it wrong. Um, but that's not what it's all about. It's about making errors and learning from your errors, okay? You may have made an error. That's absolutely okay, right? We want to get you to a state where you make as little errors as possible in the exam room. So again, I'm going to, I'm going to list my scores in ascending order here, right? From the smallest to the biggest. What is the lowest score that we would have seen in this exam? It appears to be a 30. Then what do we have next? We have a 50, right? At least 150. When I say we have a 50, I mean at least 150. We have at least 155. Yes. What do we have again? We have a 73. We have 78. And we have, finally, we have 80, all right? How many 30s did we get from these students? We had 130. What about the 50s? Right, this was the 130 right here. No, no more 30s. We had 150. Yes, we had 150. How many, or is it really one? Yes, it's one. How many 55s did we get? As you can see, we have 155 there. So we're going to list that as 1. How many 73s do we have? Again, I am only seeing 173. All right. Okay. How many 78s do I have? I have 1, 2, 3 78s. All right. And uh, how many 80s do I have? I have one, two 80s. All right. So did I get them all? How many scores do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. And this here is tallying to. 3 plus 2 is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it appears like I missed one. How many 30s do I have? I have 130. I have 150. 155. 173. 378s. 378s and 280s. All right. All right. And this is the importance here of doing that tally chart. It's not popping out to me right now which number that I'm missing. Um, 
All right, but 78 is clearly the most frequent. All right, because we have three of those and we don't have any that is equal to 78 or more than 78. All right, so Alan scored five marks less than the modal score. So the modal score here was 78 and he scored five less than. So that would give us a score of 73. The next caller, if you would like, you can tell me which number I am missing out here on the board because I know that I am missing one. All right, but you will not be making that mistake at home. I am looking at a very large board and hopefully you are just looking at your paper that you've copied these numbers onto. All right, so we're moving on to another question, guys. The amount of rainfall during a 10-day period is recorded below. We experienced quite a lot of rain yesterday, right? And it may have been more millimeters than is expressed on the board here right now. Some people's houses were inundated and so on. And if you were a victim of that, our heart goes out to you, all right? Um... So these are the amounts of rainfall during a 10-day period. All right. We want to know which is the mode. So I do have a caller on the line. Good evening, caller. Welcome to C Results on IBN TV. Hello. 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 Hi. Good evening, caller. Welcome to C Results. Okay, so you need, to, you need to lower the um, volume on the TV and listen on the phone, all right? Okay. Yeah. So as soon as you have that answer for me, I'm here ready and waiting. The answer is 2.5 milliliters. 2.5 milli? Liters. All right, millimeters. So, right, millimeters. I know, I know why you had said milliliters there, you know, because you're thinking about a liquid. Yeah. And you know, we usually measure volume in, in liters and so on, right? But this is actually um, measured from the ground, from the ground level. So we, we measure in upwards from the ground how many millimeters of rainfall we had. So thank you very much. The answer is 2.5. And how did you know it was 2.5 again? Because it is the most frequent. Because it is the most frequent. All right. Well done. Congrats. Thank you for that answer. Thanks so much for calling. All right. So, okay. We have 2.5. How many times? We have it there. One, two, three times. All right. I am not going to draw the table this time because my vision of... The board is a little bit impaired. Um, so we had 2.53 times. What about 3.5? How many times did we have that? One, I'm looking across now. I'm not seeing any more 3.5s. Our 4.5, which is next. Do we have one 4.5? All right, great. How many one millimeters? Again, just the one that I am seeing, um, the eight millimeters, we have one and we have two there. All right, we had two instances of eight millimeter rainfall in the 10-day period. What about three millimeters? I am seeing one, just the solitary one. All right, what about eight millimeters? Well, we just did that. We saw that we had two. The 2.5, we already established that we have three of those. And for the 12 millimeters, again, that only occurred on one day. All right? So therefore, the mode right, of rainfall for this particular day would have been the most frequent one, which is 2.5 millimeters. And that is our answer. All right, so that will conclude our segment on um, statistics for this week. We looked at arithmetic mean, and we looked at mode, and we're going to jump back in now into some 
um, number, which was the first stream. It is the one that is most questioned or most examined in the exam paper. It constitutes about half of the questions on the paper. Right? Again, I'll just do a quick run breakdown of the paper, what's coming, parents, for you to be aware. So I hope that you, you guys will be ready um, and waiting on those questions on mode and mean that I will be putting up over the weekend and you'll have another week to do that. And please ensure that you have done our questions that were posted on Sunday by the time 11.59 rolls around on Sunday of this weekend. The new questions based on this week's material should be out before that. So there'll be a lot of activity taking place on the Edmodo page. And for again, for our new viewers, I'll just remind you, this doesn't apply to those who already have accounts with us. So if we just zoom in there on this code, um, you go to www.edmodo.com or you download the Edmodo app. On your phone, parents, you register as a student, right? Parents can also register and link their accounts to their children's. Um, however, these are young children, so if they are using your device, you may not need to go to that um, step. You can just overlook them while they are doing the quizzes and so on through their student account. And they are going to enter this um, access code. From time to time, the code does appear to refresh on admodo.com. So this is the second code that we have. All right, we are fast approaching about 200 students and we want to keep that growing and we want to keep everybody in there learning and doing their best. They can post questions to us on the wall of the Edmodo page. They can communicate with us directly. Again, we are taking submissions weekly on the creative writing. So you're going to get personalized feedback on your creative writing. Most of the quizzes that we post for English and ELA, but not all, most of them will be marked instantaneously because we would have already input the correct answers ahead of time. So once you're finished doing a quiz, you will be taken immediately to your results page and you can see where you went wrong and you will also see the correct answer that should have been, all right? If it doesn't become clear to you why that should have been the answer, or maybe if, you know, God forbid we make a little mistake, which we haven't so far, thankfully. You can even challenge us by commenting and messaging and saying, Sir, Miss, you know, what's up with this question? So it's very interactive. It's very innovative. And we want you all on board. Again, edmodo.com. And you join, you create an account as a student, join a class. This will be your code to enter, okay? So we're about at the halfway point here in my segment. I'm going to take a couple minutes break. And then we'll be back and we'll be jumping back into our number with a new topic under the number stream as we move forward. So thank you for watching. Keep, look, keep watching. Keep watching on the live stream. Share the live stream, guys. We'll be back very shortly. Okay, so assalamu alaikum, good evening, and welcome back to 
C Results on IBN TV and on our C Results Facebook page and the IBN TV Facebook page. Um, so I just wanted to jump back here to this question really quickly. And I said that the frequencies when we're looking for the mode should tally or should add up to the amount of numbers that we have. We have 10 numbers in this example, right? And we were, were able to tell that 78 was the mode because we had three instances of 78. When we added it up just now, I was only finding 9 and not the 10. And the reason being is that we did not include the 70 here in our chart. So we add in the 170 into our frequency table and we would have gotten that extra one to make sure that it all tallied up to 10, all right? Again, we were missing a 70 in between, but the answer that we got from our caller was indeed correct because 70 only had a frequency of one and the one with the highest frequency was 78, so therefore the mode was 78 and we were able then to calculate Allen's score which was five less than the modal score, which ended up being 73, all right? So this is the reason we have our checks and balances in our strategies, all right? So now that we've come kind of full circle uh, for our people who are now joining us, who are now beginning to view the program and we're getting new followers, um, new people that like the page on Facebook every day. So, you know, as we are in this growth phase, we want to just keep reminding people about you know, the things that are going to help them and help, them help their kids prepare for SEE, all right? So the maths paper, again, it's 75 minutes, 45 questions divided into three sections, right? The first section, those questions carry the least amount of marks, but don't be fooled, they can be very tricky. Um, then there are the questions in section two that carry two to three marks, and the section three that carries four marks, all right, per question. And uh, obviously, this would indicate the level of difficulty of those questions. All right, so we're kind of dealing with section one questions mainly for now. As the weeks go by and we get nearer and nearer to SEA, we will be focusing on some of the even more challenging ones. I know we have, in fact, encountered some questions that were a bit, would have been a bit tricky already, but it can get a little bit harder. But don't be intimidated, guys. This is why we have in this program to make you prepared um, to bring as many realistic type questions to you as possible and to have you participate, all right? And um, each of those sections are broken down like this. We have 20 in section one, 20 in section two, and five questions in section three. And the, there are the different streams, all right? So what the different strands, we are back here into number. And number has the most amount of questions. It deals with everything to do with numbers, you know, some properties of numbers, um, how to do the basic operations on the numbers, the add, the subtract, the divide, the multiply, and a little bit about fractions, about decimals, and many more topics. And so far, we've covered our place value, right? We looked at that in depth, and there was a quiz that was given on that, all right? Now, today, I want to look at something which is number sequences. It always comes in the section one under number. And it's a very fun topic because it's like solving a little mystery, all right? We're going to have a series of numbers um, separated by commas, and usually you have to figure out what the last number in that sequence is. And this is how we are going to approach it today, is by giving you an opportunity. We have a lot of examples up on the board, so you all can call and try to tell me what the missing number in the sequence is, all right? So... Just a little uh, bit of information on the sequences before we start to attempt our questions. All right, so a sequence, it contains terms that are related, right? So there's some relationship between the terms and they follow a particular rule or pattern, all right? It becomes possible to list the terms in order once we've discovered the rule or pattern, once we know the pattern and you give us a number within the sequence, we can figure out which one comes next and then the next after that, and so on, all right? So usually, so far, the questions that I've looked at, they give you um, a number or a, a few numbers in the sequence, and you are just meant to find the one at the end. I will give you an opportunity to find maybe more than one today, all right, in sequence, okay? So it is really upon you as a student to look at the numbers 
and figure out what's coming next in our sequence. All right, so there's a rule at play. There's a pattern that will emerge once you look at it. And we have two examples here on the board. And I will open up the lines just in a moment because I just want to do these two very easy ones. I'm leaving the tricky ones for you to try. All right, so the first, the first number here in this sequence is a 5. It's followed by an 8, then an 11, a 14, and a 17. So there's something that made this 5 become an 8, made the 8 become an 11, then a 14, and then a 17. All right, so this one is quite easy. The answer should be jumping out to you right now. And if it isn't, well, I can tell you that the rule here is to add 3. You add 3 to 5, you're going to get 8. You add 3 again, you'll get 11. You add another 3, you'll get 14. You add 3 more, you're going to get 17. So therefore, the next numbers in the sequence would be a 20, and then a 23. And lastly, you're going to have a 26, all right? And following the pattern of adding 3. Now, what about our second number sequence? We began at 40, and we moved to a 38, a 36, a 34, and then a 32. How is this happening? What's taking place from one number to the other? Now, to decipher what's taking place, you have to look at the adjacent terms in the sequence, all right? If you look at 40 and you go all the way down to 32, you will not really understand because there are a number of terms between our 40 and our 32, all right? So look at them one at a time, all right? Or one pair at a time, and whatever abides between one pair must also work out in the next pair and so on, all right? So from 40 to 38, we would have subtracted two, all right? Then we would have subtracted another 2, another 2, another 2, and gotten all the way down to 32. And if we continue to take away 2, we're going to end up with these three values here at the end. All right? So now, be ready with your phones, with your cell phones and so on. I have a number of questions here. The numbers to call are up on the screen. And you are going to help me figure out what numbers are coming up in these sequences. So we have a, another kind of straightforward one for number one. But I'm going to start it off easy. It's going to get a little more challenging as we proceed. Do we have any takers on this number one question? And we do. Good evening, caller. Welcome to See Results on IBN TV. Hello. Hello. And who am I speaking to? Michaela. Welcome, Michaela. Can you tell me the missing numbers for number one? Okay, so you're going up in twos. Right. So after nine will mm -hmm. be 11. Mm -hmm. And after 11 will be 13. And after 13 will be 15. Right. And how did you figure that out? How did you know that it was going up in twos? Because... Uh, because... If you add two to three, yeah. you, if you add two to one, you'll get three. Right. And, then and it, mm -hmm. go ahead. And you keep going like that. Right. So because it worked for one, you still need to check the next one and make sure it's also working, right? So it worked mm -hmm. again here to get to our five. So very no. good, Michaela. Thank number you very two much. Answers. Oh, you want to give number two answers as well? Yes. <laughs> all right, all right. Since you, are, since you have been such a good sport, I'll give you an opportunity to do one more. Go ahead. Okay. So, number two answers will be, you're going up in five, so, num so it would be 28. Yeah. 33. Yes. And 38. All right. Okay, Makira, thank you so much. You've done an excellent job. Thank you for your call and keep viewing, all right? Okay, so that was Michaela there. And again, we noticed that as we move from 3 to 8, 
what happened is that we could have added 5, all right? Is that the only possible scenario where that would work out? Well, we'll find out soon enough that sometimes it isn't as straightforward as it seems. Sometimes there's more than one thing happening, all right? But then we look to the next term. Can we add 5 and get the 13 again? Yes, we can. So it's safe to say that you just keep adding 5 as we proceed along our sequence. And that took us to the 28 and the 33 and our 38. So fabulously done, Michaela. All right. We do have another. Well, we have quite a number of sequences again. And uh, who is going to call me to help me figure out what to do now? All right. We have four more on the board here. The number three, it begins with a 48 and it's moving on to 44, then to 40, to 36, and to 32. And I do have a caller on the line. Good evening, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Hello. Hi, hello. Um, is it possible to turn down the TV a little bit? All right, so you can go ahead now and tell me your answer, please. First of all, you can tell me your name. My name? Yes. My name is Tariq Isaac. Okay, Tariq Isaac, welcome to our program. And do you have an answer for number three? Yes. Go ahead, please. The answer for number three? Yes. Will be 30, will be 26, will be 28. Uh-huh. Then it will be 24. Right. And after 24, it will be 30. It will be 20. 20. And what did you do to get these numbers, Tariq? I take away 4 from every number. Right, because that's how we got from 48 to 44, and then 44 to 40, and so on, yes? We, we kept moving along by subtracting 4. So yep. that's very correct, Tariq, and thank you so much for your call. Do appreciate it. All right, so that's one more that we would have gotten correct. Um, what's taking place in number four? Number four is a bit more tricky. So I do have another caller on the line. And good yeah. evening. Welcome to see results on IBM TV. Hi, good evening, caller. Hi. Who am this I speaking with? This is Michaela with? again. <laughs> Hi, Michaela. All right, so this time I only give you one, right? We're going to give some, some more people a chance as well, but I'm happy to have you back. Can you give us yeah. the answer for number four? So the number for the answer for number four is twenty-one, twenty-eight, uh -huh. and thirty-six. Twenty-one, twenty-eight, and thirty-six. All right, just let me raise this board here because this is some serious business now. How did you get that twenty-one and um, twenty-eight and thirty-six? Because you're going up. And like original numbers, two, two, after three, uh -huh. then four, five, six, and like that. All right. So every time you're adding, you're adding one more to it, not so? Yeah. All right. Very good, Makila. Thank you so much for your call. I you're do. welcome. And okay, lovely. So, ladies and gentlemen, how they are viewing? All right, how did we arrive at this? Now, pay attention, everyone. If you had looked at one to three, you could have quickly said, well, all right, the pattern is to add two. And then you come down here by number 15, right? And you say, all right, so my next numbers is a 17 and a 19 and a 21. And you would have gone on your merry way and then found out later on that, no, that was absolutely incorrect. Okay, that's why it's important to test again. All right, we look at the first pair, which is our one and three. Yes, we did increase by one, by two, sorry. But what about when we move from three to six? That's a difference of three. We added three there. All right, so something is up. So we need to look again at what's taking place. From six to ten, that is a difference of four. All right, what about ten to fifteen? We added Five, and do we see the pattern emerging here? All right. 
we keep adding one more to our addition between each subsequent term, all right? So we added two, then we added three, then we added four, then we added five. So logically, next we will be adding six to get our 21. We'll be adding seven to get our 28. And then finally, we'll be adding eight to get our 36. So Michaela did a very fabulous job there and deciphering this problem in such a short space of time. And I want to commend her. And I want to urge you all now out there to look at number five. Again, some more tricky business out there. What are we doing to get the next three numbers in our sequence for number five? And uh, I'm very interested to see who's going to get all three missing values for this one. And the lines are open. Feel free to give us a call. Those numbers in the sequences are 1 and 3 and 9 and 27. And we have to figure out what's coming up next. So I do have a caller on the line. Good evening, caller. Welcome to See Results on IBN TV. Hello. Hi, good evening. Who am I speaking with? Okay, so we seem to have lost that caller there. Do I have another caller on the line? Yes, I do. Good evening. Welcome to See Results on IBN TV. Hello. Hello. And who am I speaking with? Jada Mohammed. Oh, well, welcome, Jada Mohammed. Um, do you know what are the next three values in our sequence? 81, 243, 729. Wow. And how do you know that? Each number you're multiplying by three to get the next number. Right, we're multiplying by three. Okay, so well done. Thank you so much, caller. You are absolutely right. Those of you at home, I wonder how many of you all would have gotten that so quickly. Right, so I do commend this caller. Now, what's taking place here? For, again, look at this sequence, guys. It's very similar to the last one in terms of the first two. The first two numbers in our sequence, all right? So I'm, I do apologize. I have to let the callers hang on a bit as I explain to those who may not have gotten it right away. Okay, we could have said, all right, from one to three, I added two. And again, you could have made a mistake and gone on adding two into those missing values down there only to get it wrong, all right? What's another way that one can become three? We can multiply by three, okay? If we multiply by 3, again, will it work? So we say 3 multiplied by 3. And that gave us our 9. Good. Right? Multiply by 3. 9 3 is 27. And of course, now in the exam, yet multiplication skills will be tested. Because you're going to have to come in your little working column on the side here. And keep multiplying. Right? I get your 81, and you multiply your 81 by your 3, right? And then you would have gotten your 243, all right? And then finally, when you multiply the 243 by 3 in your working column, you should have gotten 729. So, excellently done, caller. I do have one more sequence here. All right, and who will be the caller to solve this puzzle for us? And I'm going to say to our callers now, you know, do we have any on the line? The numbers are there on the screen. Good evening, caller, and welcome to see results on IBN TV. Um, hello. Hello. Uh, call to answer number six when they're doing it. All right, so go ahead, please. First of all, what's your name? Farid. Farid, welcome, Farid. So what is our number, our answer for number six? Um, I think it's after 31, it will be 63. 63. Then 127. 127. And then 255. And then 255. All right. So how did you arrive at that caller? Um, so you multiply by 2 and then you add 1, 
So one by two is two plus one is three. Three by three um three by two is six. Yes. Plus one is seven. Yes. Seven by two is fourteen plus one is fifteen. Yeah. Fifteen plus fifteen by two is thirty plus one is thirty one. Excellent. Thirty one by two it would be sixty two. Plus yeah. one is sixty three. Sixty three right. by two equals one twenty six plus one one twenty seven and one twenty seven by two equals one fifty four plus one equals two fifty five. Right, okay, so well done. Thank you so much for it. That was excellently done, man. Well done. All right, so thank you so much, Cola. And uh, that is how we arrived at these answers, guys. He was able to see again. Look at these three questions here. They all begin with a one and a three in the sequences, all right? But then they all carry on to have very different values as we move from one term to the next. And this is because there are different rules for these sequences that we must be able to decipher. All right, so we test always more than one pair and we make sure that it continues along, okay? So he said that he's multiplying our first number by two and then adding one. So we have two operations now taking place. Before, we've only been seeing one, all right? Or, yeah, mainly one, all right? And in this case, we're multiplying by two and we're adding a one. Right? That's how we got the 3. 1 by 2 is 2. Add 1 is 3. As he said, you multiply the 3 by the 2, and you get 6. And you add 1, you get the 7. 7 twos are 14. Add 1 is 15. 15 by 2 is 30. Add 1 is 31. 31 by 2, as he said, is 62. Add 1, which is 63. And 63 by 2, 126. Add 1 is 127. And then finally, 127 by 2 gave us 254, and he added 1 to end up with 255. So well done to you, Sir Farid. And now we have a couple questions here from some past paper exercises, some past paper type questions that now that we've got it down. And we have just about three of these that I'm going to give you all an opportunity to answer before we wrap up for today and end our number sequences segment. And we remember we are back in the number strand parents, all right? So note this down as a topic to revise, number sequences, whatever textbooks that you may be using, whatever workbooks that you may be using, look out for these questions, practice with them. I'm gonna give you some as well on our Edmodo website, all right? So we have the numbers two, five, 10, and 17. And who out there can tell me what is the next number or the missing number in this sequence. We do have our numbers up on the screen right now. So we do have a call on the line. Good evening and welcome to Series Hi, Results. Hi, yeah, I'd like to answer a question. Okay, who is this? Who am I speaking with? Um, you are speaking with Nicholas. Hey, welcome back, Nicholas. Yeah. And what is our answer here? Well, the part, first of all, to begin with the pattern, it's plus three, uh -huh. plus five, Plus uh -huh. seven, plus right. nine. All right, so 17 add nine is what? 17 add nine equals um, 26. All right, can you tell me something about these numbers that you're adding? There's one and the three and the five and the seven and so on. Those are um, odd numbers. Odd numbers, excellent, excellent, excellent. We are adding, starting from three, and, but not one, which is also an odd, odd number. And we yes. keep adding every subsequent odd number, right? Yes. So, well done, Nicholas. Thank you so much for your call. That was really well done. All right, guys? So, odd numbers. Remember what your odd numbers are. All of those counting numbers that are not exactly divisible by 2. All right? So, we keep adding our odd numbers as we go. 3 here, the 5, the 7, and we added a 9 to get to our 26. And that is our missing number in our sequence. All right, we have another one now. Don't be alarmed by the percentages. All right, there are still numbers in a sequence. All right, how do we move from one to the next? Does anyone out there have any ideas? Have a look at it and please call in and let us know what the next number in our sequence is. The lines are open. We're going from 95 to 85 
to 76 and to 68. All right, don't, don't let the percentage signs confuse you. Right, these are still numbers, okay? And they, they are moving down in a certain pattern in our sequence. Can you figure out what the pattern is? All right? Okay, so I do have a caller on the line. Good evening and welcome to see results. Okay, I seem to have lost that call. Well, I can tell you that from our first number, which is 95%, on to the 85%, we would have moved down by 10. Okay, I have another caller on the line. Good evening, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Okay, I have another caller on the line. Good evening, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Good evening. Okay, good evening. And do you have an answer for us here? Okay, so you can, lower, can you lower down the um, volume on the TV yeah, set, please? All right. So, do are you there, caller? Yes. All right. And who am I speaking with? Tyreek Isaac. Ah, welcome, Tyreek Isaac. And what is the missing number in the sequence? Can the you? number is um, 61%. Oh. All right. And how did you get that 61%? From the 95 uh -huh. to the 85, I take away 10. Right. And from the 85 to the 76, I take away 9. Right. And from the 76 to the 68, I take away 8. Yes. And then I take away 7. From the 68 to get 61%. All right, fabulous. So every time you were taken away, one less, not so? Mm hmm. All right, Tyreek. Excellent job, man. Thank you for calling. All right, so we're going to squeeze in this last question, guys, before we wrap the show up for today. Find the next number in the sequence below. All right, uh, you have less than a minute to call in and give me the answer to this question. What's taking place here? Can anybody tell me? All right. We're moving from 120 to 60 to 20 to 5. What's that missing number? Do we have a ticker for this question? All right, I do. So good evening, caller, and welcome to see results on IBN TV. Good evening, caller. Welcome to the show. Hello. 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 Okay, so Hello? you need to lower your set, please. Hello? Yes, and who am I speaking with? Um, so, my name is Trisha Sibero. Okay, so welcome. So, you take away 60 from 120, uh -huh. and then you take away 40 from 60. Then you take away 40 from uh -huh. Then what? And you take away 15 from 20, and, that's, and then you'll get 5. And what will be the last number in the sequence using that, using that pattern? So, so when I take away 15 from 5, uh, when I take away 15 from 20, sorry. All right, okay. You'll, 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 you'll have to take away, you'll have to take away... All right, so I will help you out there, right? So listen to me on the line, please, on the, on the TV, please. All right, so you know what? I am actually going to leave this question for next day because it's a very juicy question, and I want someone to get it out. So you all note it down. Thank you so much, Kola, for your effort just now. I do commend you, all right? But that was actually an incorrect answer, so think about it. Uh, we've run out of time now for today. So you'll be joining me on Monday again, God willing, for some more mathematics. I am on first at five, and then we'll have English language arts with Miss Nyla. Thank you so much for watching today, and you will join us again next week. And look out for more quizzes on Edmodo over the weekend, okay? Thank you so much for watching. It's been my pleasure. Ijaz Ramsaha, your maths teacher. Good night, and assalamu alaikum.